Zoom. Here are all the Zoom recorders that I own, all five of them. The H1, H2N, H4N, H5, and the H6. I don't have the H4N Pro, but these are pretty much all of the digital audio recorders that Zoom makes. Uh, there's a few that are just uh, USB interfaces, but these are the main ones. I don't have the F8 or the F4. These are more of the pocket variety. In this video, I'm going to talk about what I use each of these recorders for and if I still use them after having five. And maybe you could figure out which one you can purchase if you're in the market for any of these right now. Let's talk about the differences of all these recorders first. Going on the left, this is the H1. It only has the attached microphone XY pattern and you can input a 3.5 millimeter jack. With the H2N, you have more of a capsule, four capsule recorder that you can put in traditional vocal or audio surround sound configuration. You can configure it in different patterns, pickup patterns, as you can see up here. But it's basically a surround sound version of the H1. You can also plug in a microphone, 3.5 millimeter. The H4N, which has been around for a while, has both two XLR inputs and then the AXY pattern internal microphone. You can record all four, the stereo tracks from the inbuilt microphones and the two XLR inputs at the same time. It's a multi-track recorder. The H5 is an evolution of the H4N where you get pretty much the same features all more advanced. Here's the big change. You have interchangeable microphone mounts. This one's a stereo XY pattern, but you can also put on a shotgun microphone and then they have a surround sound mic and then they have another capsule that adds two more XLR inputs. The H6 is just like the H5, except you have four audio inputs, XLR inputs, and you can also interchange with the mic capsule system that Zoom uh, is, has made. This is essentially six audio channels once you put on the microphone. The reason why a lot of independent filmmakers and hobbyists have the Zoom audio recorders is the amount of variety you could use these devices for. For example, every single one of these devices can be used as an USB audio interface. You can even, once you get up to the XLR versions, you can use XLR or uh, like a guitar input, and you can use this for music recording, audio, uh, vocal recording, or podcasts. This becomes a, a digital interface with your computer. And they work with GarageBand, Logic Pro if you're a Mac user, and I believe Pro Tools and any other PC audio software that you can think of, it most likely works. Cubase, that's what it comes with. It most likely works for all of them. The H4N is not as good as the H5 and the H6, but the H5 and H6 are to me essentially the same. Uh, I believe it might have the same preamps and processing. It doesn't, I don't see a big difference besides the fact that the H6 has more inputs than the H5. I think they're identical in audio quality. You take a little step down once you go backwards to the H4N, but uh, you really can't go wrong with any of these recorders. It's just a matter of your budget and how much uh, more you want to get out of these recorders. The Zoom H1 is one of those devices that I take everywhere with me because I always can find a use for them. This is a great microphone when I'm doing an interview, like a on the street interview, like journalism. I'll put a windscreen, foam windscreen, and maybe a dead cat on here, and I could do interviews on the street with people, and uh, it would I would have really great audio. I can also use this on top of my... DSLR and mirrorless cameras with a cold shoe adapter. I can just screw it on here, place it up, and I could export or I can connect 
with the headphone line out cable into my camera and have good stereo audio into the camera. I do this sometimes when I'm recording concerts. The limiters on here are decent. They're not the best. You, if, if you're right in front of a speaker, it'll blow out. But if you're fairly, in, if you're in a good position uh, where, where it's not too loud, you can suppress the sound and have really good stereo audio to record a concert with. What I do when I'm seriously recording a concert is I would bring the H6, the H5, or the H4n, and I would use, uh, I would tap into the soundboard. That's the best way to do it. But when you're just in a room, you can't tap into the soundboard and you want some good quality audio into your camera, this is a very lightweight, portable device that I take everywhere with me. The battery life, I find to last a pretty long time. I would say 10 to 15 hours, depending on what kind of battery, a AA battery you use. I just use the Enelope uh, rechargeable batteries and I think I get about 10 hours of use out of the H1. I also use this as a podcast microphone. I can plug in directly to my Mac and just do narration with. The Zoom H2n I use primarily for music. Again, it's one of those de uh, devices that it has a surround sound and when you can't tap into the mixer board, the sound board, I will use this to uh, put in the middle of the room or someplace where I can get a balanced audio, ambient audio, and I'll put it on four track mode and I could uh, manually adjust the levels or I could add the auto levels, which are pretty, pretty decent. I also will use this if I'm on a lower budget concert or spoken word, say like a, like a conference talk. Very common output is a RCA output, unbalanced. And what I would do is I'd plug the unbalanced or maybe headphone output of the mixer board, plug it in here into the line in, and then use the mic capsules to capture the ambience of the room. So I have two, I have multiple channels of audio when I'm recording a live conference event. The H4n, I don't use that often anymore because the H5 has replaced all my uses for the H4n. The only thing I would use the H4n now is for a digital audio interface when I just want to permanently connect this to one of my computers and just use the uh, XLR inputs for to record music or voiceovers or stuff like that. So the H4n, if you have no money and you want the XLRs, H4n, get it used. I think it's a good deal, but if you have the money, skip the H4n, get the H5. H5, to me, is the best of all of the above, of all of the, uh, the recorders. It has this interchangeable capsule that I don't even use, because I don't use the XLR, I don't use the Zoom microphone modules at all. I'll just use this Zoom H5 for the XLR inputs. And if I wanted two more inputs, I can have the XLR module. But this is what I use it for, just the XLR inputs. And the limiters are digital, so that's one thing I worry about. But besides that, excellent quality audio, small form factor. In my experience, just using those antelope uh, rechargeable batteries, I get about six hours with, with phantom power. Maybe a little less than that, and then I swap the batteries. The H6 is a bit of an anomaly for me because it's it has more inputs, but I don't really utilize all of the inputs. And it's bigger than the H5, so it's kind of cumbersome transporting it. So I haven't really found a place for the H6 yet. I was using this for when I was recording podcasts. I would just put this on uh, my desk and have multiple uh, XLR inputs and record podcasts with commentary tracks for video. And I thought it was okay, but I didn't really need uh, the four, six tracks when I could have just got the XLR module and turned this into a four track recorder. So I don't know, I might be getting rid of the H6. I haven't found uh, a place for it in, in the things that I do. 
But the H5, this is the sweet spot for me. And I strong, highly recommend the H5. Every job I do, every video job I'm on, I'll take at least one of these recorders, if not all three, because I can use all three. I can use this one exclusively on one of my cameras. I can use this one and put it in the middle of the room or someplace close on stage if I'm doing a concert or, or conference. And this one, the H5, I keep all the way in the back by the soundboard and have it plugged in to get the, sound, uh, the mix from the, the board feed. One thing that I wish the Zoom will come out with soon is something like the Tascam DR-10L. Tascam DR-10L is essentially the Zoom H1 minus the onboard XY microphones. It's primarily used for just uh, 3.5 millimeter inputs, whether that's gonna be a lav microphone or you can connect it to say a board feed. And it already has built in uh, safety tracks. So it's a stereo track, you have two tracks of audio. It's a mono signal, it doesn't record stereo. So with the mono signal, you have one main track and then you can set another track at a lower dB of gain so you can always protect from distortion. The, there are digital limiters in the Tascam, so that's why you would want to have two tracks versus just trusting the li limiters. Instead of the Zoom H4 and 8, the reason why I haven't gotten those yet, one that I don't need it, but there was a point where I did need multiple inputs, and I, got, I had the Roland R44. This I got when I was doing audio for an independent feature film. <laughs> and it served me very well. I would have this in an audio bag and utilize up to four XLR inputs. What I would be doing is I'd have two or three with wireless lav microphones on the actors and then I'd have one as a boom, which I would be doing because it was a low budget. The reason why I got the R44, because at the time when I was doing this feature film, this was back in 2011, 2012, there wasn't much out there in this form factor with these features. This was one of the lower budgeted pieces of equipment that had multiple inputs, had the phantom power, had all the features you needed for film. This version was a modified version by the Ode Brothers. Uh, it's a company that takes audio devices from other manufacturers and uh, uh, opens it up inside and puts in a better preamplifier. So this one had a mod has a modified preamplifier that's more sensitive. The downside to this one is the battery life isn't that great. All of a lot of the controls are up right here on the surface and not all on the front panel. So when you have this in a sound bag, you really can't access these that easily. And the other thing is it doesn't connect to the computer as a digital audio interface. That's a drawback for me.